politically incorrect, actor Alan Alda, supermodel Cindy Crawford, Republican activist Arianna Huffington, and comedian Kevin Rooney. And now, the star of Politically Incorrect, Bill Maher! Oh, thank you. Please, thank you. Very, I know, very exciting night. Uh, the Grammys were tonight. Did you watch the Grammys? Sure you did. <laughs> there were some very, uh... Exciting uh, performances. Eric Clapton uh, performed, and Tony Braxton, and Bruce Springsteen. And then for the big finale, uh, two Scottish scientists came out and cloned Seal. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, Ellen DeGeneres hosted, did a great job as usual. And, uh, you know, up for best rock album was Sheryl Crow and Bonnie Wright, and Ellen said she was very sure that Bonnie Wright was going to win, and so sure that if she lost, she'd eat crow. That's what she said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. are, we, are we still on? You know who else uh, won a Grammy? Hillary Clinton won a Grammy Award for the, the book, the... Uh, her book, that which made into a tape uh, of It Takes a Village, her big-selling book. Uh, she was passed over, though, for her book about the White House called It Takes Visa. <laughs> um, yeah, they're... <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, they're in, they're in trouble again with the fundraising over there at the, the Clinton, Clinton White House. They, there was a memo that hit the papers today that he himself wrote, and it sounds so desperate. He actually wrote, please send us a check. Please. <laughs> send us a check now. $50 today is worth more than $100 in a week. <laughs> That's what he wrote. And then at the bottom, he wrote, last term in office, all influence must go. <laughs> well, you know what we have? Uh, an oversupply of in America now? Doctors. There is a glut of doctors, so there's a group of doctors and medical groups who are trying to stop the foreign doctors. <laughs> Always go for the foreigners. <laughs> They're tr trying to stop them from coming into the country. And there are a lot of foreign doctors. I was at a doctor the other day. I think this guy was a foreign, because he said to me, uh, turn your head towards Mecca and cough. I... <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming. <laughs> all been satirized for your protection. In our panel. First, he is an Emmy Award winning writer, comedian Kevin Rooney. Where is Kevin Rooney? There he is. And my pal. Oh. She is a uh, syndicated columnist and founder for the Center for Effective Compassion, and she's got a bunch of it. Ariana Huffington. <laughs> my girlfriend. How are you, honey? Thank you, Steve. She, of course, is a, uh, a supermodel, super actress, and the super author of Cindy Crawford's Basic Face. Cindy Crawford! Oh. You are beloved. Nice to meet you. And thank you very much for that. I, I, I scraped off a little of your cells because we can clone now, so I... <laughs> make you in the basement. He is an actor, writer, and director who's been nominated for 28 Emmys and won five for his work on MASH. His new series is Scientific American Frontiers, and his new movie is Everyone Says I Love You. Alan Alda! <laughs> Here's Alan Alda. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. Hello. Okay. Howdy, bud. <laughs> okay. Well... <clears throat> Obviously, what we're going to talk about tonight is the Clintons and their way of raising money, which they seem to enjoy. Um, and now, not to, not to take sides here, because last week the Republicans also had controversy. They met in, was it Boca Raton? Mm -hmm. Somewhere down in Florida, some uh, swanky place in Florida with their, what they call their Team 100. These are people who give $100,000 or more, and that 
caused some controversy. Now, these are like the people giving the Republicans who went down there are executives of oil companies, gas companies, tobacco companies. Not that they don't give to the Democrats, but they give more to the Republicans. It seems to me the people who the Democrats are bilking are a bunch of tourists who just want to say they had sex in the Lincoln bedroom. <laughs> and these are people who go there alone. Right. <laughs> Can I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> We're not still on after what you said. I know, that. you're right. <laughs> but what do you think? You, you think know, th it's not really whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans. See, these are quid pro quos. You know, you have this businessman from Florida who walks up to the President of the United States at an event and says to him, I have $5 million to give to the DNC and here's my business card. And instead of the President saying, whom do you take me for, a bag man? He says, can I have another one? <laughs> And he gives it to Harold Dickies on his staff, and Harold yeah. Dickies arranges it all. And on top of it, the president lifts the ban of the flights to Cuba. So we're not just talking about sleeping in the Lincoln bedroom and having oh. sex alone or with somebody else. Yeah. We are talking about American policy for sale. Well. And Chelsea's slumber parties. <laughs> there were like Chelsea's how, friends how listed in there of like 72 yeah. friends of Chelsea. Are you Chelsea. talking about the people who, this who list who yeah, slept who, who in the, in, yeah. I know, some of the people who got to sleep in the Lincoln bedroom, Chevy Chase, who was a great guest, I love him, but <laughs> <laughs> of all the Americans, you know, it's, it seems like there's a list of, you know, the Republicans had some incredible quotes uh, they said, the one guy, the head of the RNC Finance Committee said, the fact of the matter is, these people, talking about the $100,000 people, write checks just like people who write a $10 check. They, because they want to change America. <laughs> yeah, because they want to pollute change the Great it. Lakes. Right. <laughs> now, Whereas these don't, schmucks who stay in the bedroom <laughs> are just, it's like planet Hollywood to them. Don't get, don't get me started on what's wrong with the Republican Party. It has been taken over by bad pollsters. You had Bob Dole's pollster today give a press conference about what's wrong with the Republican Party, and he told us that the 15% tax cut, you remember the Dole plan, he said it was ill-timed and ill-conceived. Well, he was there when it was conceived. Why didn't he pipe up then? Now, <laughs> all these pollsters are telling us what was wrong. See, uh, that's the thing. That, that I hear all the Democrats, their big thing, their defense of this is that uh, the Republicans raised, I think, $200 million more in this campaign. But they bet it on Dole. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> how bright is that? Right. I told them so. What are you, Republican or Democrat? Do you I, have a... You know, I think as a woman, I I'm, I'm, I'm have to be a Democrat. But, I mean, I was raised in the Midwest, blue-collar family, Republican. So, you know, I think what we, we were talking about back there, that I'm fiscally conservative. <laughs> and I'll bet probably, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and probably socially, you know, more Democrat. Right. And well, Kevin, I mean, uh, you... Oh, I, I think it's a big, just a big tempest and a bedpan, basically. I, you know, the, the whole notion of, like, renting out a room, I would rather rent a room in the White House than sell the Oval six. Office. Well, well, than sell the Oval Office to a tobacco company. It just seems bizarre. I, I don't, right? <laughs> I, I may be old-fashioned, but I think they should take the meter off the Lincoln bed. <laughs> it, just, it just seems like it's going too when far. When they put in the, the quarters for the magic the qu fingers yeah. on that, yeah, that was going too far. Too much, okay, we have to far. take a break. We'll come back and continue. <laughs> Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher, brought to you by Saturn. If you're planning to be in the Los Angeles area and would like free tickets to Politically Incorrect, call 213-852-2655. Okay, we were talking about uh, access in this country and how you buy it. Now, and we have held hands on many issues where I've been with you, but I, and I'm not trying to defend the Democrats. I'm just saying I think who, the way they sell access is more harmless because I think they're selling to the kind of tourist <laughs> who goes to Planet Hollywood and no, is no, thrilled. How do you know that? <laughs> I mean, is that, is that true? <laughs> no, but who, who cares about sleeping in the Lincoln bedroom? Yeah, Some really. dumb yuppie. Who, 
don't know. Where, you think so? I mean, yes, uh, I do. Uh, oh, well, you don't, you don't think that, that if you can drop it at coffee? dinner one night with fellow hundred thousand dollar folks uh, when I was at the White House and was, you know, it's drafty in the Lincoln bedroom. Yeah. You start to, these little, these <laughs> little, right. you know, tidbits. Doesn't that uh, up you a notch in somebody's estimation, or maybe you think it does? I, I mean, think it's But a how lot. does that actually affect no, no, the country? Yeah, think of yeah, it, for, I... for years now, people have been titillated by the news of whom is Clinton sleeping with in his bedroom. Now, <laughs> we realize that <laughs> the action has really been down the hall in the Lincoln bedroom. Maybe soon there's going to be a scandal that mixes the two. You know, whom is Clinton sleeping with in the Lincoln bedroom? They're going to bedroom. discover new bedrooms there. That's going to be like buried in the basement. But look, here's the, here seems to me to be the problem, regardless of who's in the White House. I'm just, I'm not, I don't have any special information. I'm not a pundit. I'm just a, 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 an interested citizen, it seems to I, me. I was surprised you weren't on this list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I checked. I scanned it for you. I, I thought it. you might be I've, one I've of us. I've been in the White House. For you too. I've mostly been in the White House uh, in the Republican administrations. But I, I've never slept there. But I, I just it's held hands time. a little. But it, that was, that was, you know. But it, here's, the, here's the part that worries yeah. me. No matter whether it's a Democrat or a Republican, if $100,000 uh, gets you the right to give your opinion to the president, um, why is that $100,000 opinion more important than a $5 opinion? You know, and, and why should that be listened to? Better? Well, I mean, it's unfair, but it's reality. It's just like, I mean, I don't know. I, I, you know, maybe got to meet politicians or whatever, and you have their your, their ear for one second. And I mean, if you're if you have any opinion about anything, you take that chance to say. I care, I'm pro-choice, or I care about this. Um, and, you know, they might arrange that they never have to stand next to you again or talk to you again, which, because you annoyed them have that one the time. Mm -hmm. What circumstance was it? Um, you know, like some celebrity thing. He was in Vancouver, and there was like a small reception um, with Richard Dreyfus was there, and um, it was when I was married to Richard Gere, and, and how, Sharon Stone how, was how there. Long it was a very interesting group. Wow. George Stephanopoulos was there, I remember that. But How long did you get to speak with him? I actually, I, I actually didn't say anything because all, there was this Tibet thing going on and Richard Dreyfuss oh. had his thing. So I kind of, the only error I made was I sat when he walked into the room and I, and I was the only one sitting and I was mortified because you're supposed to stand, I guess, but I didn't know we had royalty in this hey, I, country. <laughs> so I was sitting and feeling like an idiot. Okay. Hmm. Um, Cindy raises I, an interesting situation, if I may. You know, it, it, we all think that because they have access that he's going to listen to everybody. I mean, you just, you just described the situation where everybody's trying to pitch well, him with an idea. Not, we're not talking about influence like that. We're but, talking about quid pro quos. We're talking about lifting bans on Cuban flights. We're talking about import policy. But, we're talking about immigration policy to Guam. We're yeah, talking about specific Ariana, things. who cares about right. Guam? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it's you, like if, you're, if you're taking money from the timber industry, that could affect my, they'll tear down a forest. Who cares what our policy is? They the care Paraguay. enough to raise millions of dollars. Is there actually yep. an immigration policy to Guam? No, yeah. Guam. <laughs> you don't want to go. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> See ya. But Bring a towel. If you, if you take money from the tobacco company, they are right down the street in Washington. They're lobbyists. If you take money from Indonesia, they call and say, hey, what's happening to our money? I'm sorry we're breaking up. It must be a bad call. I, I mean, we'll get back to but you. But it's not either or. It's all bad. I mean, I want outrage about the whole thing. I want a public outcry that will lead to campaign finance reform for Republicans yes, and well, Democrats. Who's going to get the money? Who's yeah, going to get the money? money? They no, don't need no, that no, money. No, it's, it's way out of hand. This fundraising stuff is totally out of control, and it's time for the president for to make a speech. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll wait for that. We have to take a break. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, we always like it on this show when one of our guests, their own bad selves, is uh, involved in a controversy. And Cindy, you are because you did this ad for Katera, which is a, a Cadillac. Cadillac is trying to change their image, I guess. Well, they came out with a new car. So they came out it's with a new an car, image for the new car. And they hired you to do this ad for it. And it, they made it. And then the men who run Cadillac looked at it and yanked it. Mm -hmm. The ad. <laughs> badly, badly framed. 
<laughs> that was the whole time. Wow. That was, you just summed it up. We don't even need to discuss this subject now because that was the yeah. problem. I think. <laughs> well, um, sorry. <laughs> but why, I'm wondering, after so, there's so many sexual ads, I mean, so many ads that use sex, why are they picking on you? And also, um, it seems like when, when there's an ad for men where the, a guy is, you know, doing better than we are, we don't mind. Be like Mike, we're okay with that. But somehow, are women upset or threatened by this? Is that why they pulled this? I, I think they yanked it because it was a stupid ad. No, no, no. offense to you. I didn't write it. I didn't write the ad. I, I mean, mean, not because of sin. It just, it was a stupid ad. It was not effective. Well, and I can't imagine anybody not, being upset about that's it. That's actually not, not why they yanked it. The, why they yanked it is there were complaints from women. But the thing that, that isn't really covered in that article is that it was done for the Super Bowl, which is primarily a male audience. Right. And, then that w and it was part of a, a group of commercials. And they tried to run it more. But actually, the car is more geared toward women. So it was ineffective for their but target audience. you were audience. in a mini skirt, a leather. Yeah, and my own boots, which got totally trashed in the article. They said they were dominatrix boots. And I, boots, yes. and I was like, I had no idea. I was just wearing <laughs> them. Had, they were a fashion statement. It said they have a pair of dominatrix boots? <laughs> no, they're just boots. But they, oh, oh, all of a sudden, them they're dominatrix, dominatrix oh, boots. But you know, Look at Mr. Feminism like, suddenly interested. I got interested. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's very interesting. Reuters ran a story saying that their first choice for the ad was Barry White. Is no. that true? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, skirt? they normally don't tell me. <laughs> the skirt didn't wow, fit that is the Cadillac that zigs, isn't it? <laughs> hey, did, they, did they fire you and hire Pat Boone? Is that true? Yeah. yeah. I, was say, he, I think he has, he has the whole market on leather right now. Leather, so yeah. that was the problem. But that's, that's, what, show got that's what makes too. America such a fascinating country. You have people complaining about this ad being provocative. Mm -hmm. The same week that you have Sports Illustrated coming out and millions of yep. men celebrating these women in bare bikinis. Well, but I, I also think, you know, that Cadillac does have the right, you know, people were saying to me, do they have the right to pull the commercial? Of course they do. It's their money. If they don't feel it's effective for their audience, I mean, Cadillac has a definitely, the whole point of Katera, it's not your grandmother's Cadillac. Right. So, I mean, because meanwhile, my grandmother has a Cadillac. She wouldn't look good in that skirt. What? And <laughs> no offense, grandmother, if you're watching. But, you know, so they, they kind of, it's a mixed message that Cadillac is going through with this car because they want to get a young audience and make it a sexy car to own. But, you know, you, well, you need a leather skirt Cadillac for that. Cadillac owned by Republicans and black people? <laughs> I'm not touching that. The car that isn't one. that who buys Cadillacs? Oh, the car. I have, I have a Ford Explorer. Yeah, <laughs> but you're a Republican. Answer me that. Is that... Newt and Jesse getting together again? <laughs> it's a good road movie. It would make a great road movie. An old caddy convertible with Newt and Jesse on the road, solving crimes. They might need All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. Florence Henderson, Steve Gutenberg, Chris Matthews, and uh, Clarence Mason Weaver. Now, our uh, final issue. Uh, there is a guy, his name is Dr. Daniel Moriarty. He was the head of the psychology department at uh, University of uh, California at San Diego. He is, uh, was arrested because he was <laughs> he's divorced, and he was target shooting at a picture of his ex-wife. Boy. With her name inscribed on the bullets. Yes. Well, yes, that's Where true. Is... He did inscribe... What? Where does a love that pure go so wrong? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know who really is the hidden victims in this is anyone who studied psychology at SD. <laughs> I think those guys should all put in for a transfer. Who they got teaching history there? You know, flat earthers or somebody. Right. <laughs> but anyone who's being treated by a psychologist who graduated from that school probably should be there. I personally feel quite safe because Try inscribing Ariana Stasinopoulos Huffington on a bullet. It can't be you done. No, I've tried it so it hard. Doesn't work. <laughs> you always get everybody on your side. Yeah. Before the show begins, you in the green room, but Hitler could be in there, and you'd in have him eating out of your actually. palm. That's right. We in the makeup room. Maybe, the, maybe the, the, the Lincoln table in the makeup room. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>
And, you know, you know what I think? I think that this guy, yeah, he's, but... he's obsessed with this woman, and I think that they ought to just put him away in jail for about 30 or 40 years, and maybe uh... some nice guy will fall in love with him. <laughs> you know? Never leave him alone, and but then he'll forget this woman. I think Alan, a... the ACLU would have a big yeah. problem with that. I mean, why? Because it's only he hasn't committed a crime. Right. It's just in his head. I and thought he got arrested for this. But also, he, he no, he's in jail. He's in jail. He, but a he's lot of jail. therapists. Oh, oh you he, mean he shouldn't be? How is just, it's no, just but, a thought. No, but he did send her the journal How that did threaten her to oh. kill her on oh. Father's Day. And also, so I mean, that's a little. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously stalking her. A question for right. Mr. Politically Incorrect himself. Is it more politically incorrect to inscribe a woman's name on a bullet or to carve it on a tree? Wow. Gee, that's really deep, I know. <laughs> I know. I think we should have a minute of silence on that.